increasing suicides epidemic, depression, rampant addiction, chaos is erupting almost everywhere we look. For many of us, that can be overwhelming. The good news, it doesn't have to be. New York Times best-selling author and pastor Jensen Franklin says you may feel the battles you've been fighting over the past few years have gotten harder. There is a reason. The war between good and evil is raging. Jensen says don't be discouraged. No matter what is going on in your life and in our world, God is still in complete control. In his new book, Overcoming When You Feel Overwhelmed, Jensen offers steps to help you not just survive the chaos of life, but thrive during these trying times. Please welcome back to the 700 Club, Jensen Franklin. It's wonderful to have you with us today. Thank you, Terry. It's wonderful. Well, I love the book. It, I, I was underlining already in the introduction. <laughs> Lots of people are feeling overwhelmed these days. There just seems to be so much chaos, so much disruption in the world around us. What do you think's going on? I think that people through the pandemic and now completely on the other side of it have been through so much uh, that there has been an epidemic families and lives, and uh, all of us. I don't think there's one family, one person that I've talked with who has not been through some kind of trauma, some kind of division, pain, betrayal, maybe it was a legal situation or a, a child on drugs or addiction or alcoholism. It has decimated so many people's lives, and people are desperate to find out how they can get through uh, what feels overwhelming. And I think that it's so important that we let people know that as Christians, we will have low times and down times and hard times, and it's possible to be overwhelmed and be an overcomer at the same time. Mm -hmm. Well, Jensen, uh, we're having some audio trouble here, so we're going to try to get you back again when we can really talk about your book because it's a, it's a wonderful message, not just of overcoming, um, but actually living victoriously in the hour that we're in. So um, we, we want to be sure everybody can hear what you have to say clearly. So that's Jensen Franklin. I, I love the book, Overcoming When You Feel Overwhelmed, and we'll have more for you when we can uh, correct that audio. It's definitely but a great topic for today because I think, you know, many in the church are not ready for the end times and what we're going through. And, and, and whether you call this end times or not, uh, just the number of hits we've taken, whether it's a pandemic or the economy yeah. or inflation or war, uh, the whole division in politics, the whole racial strife, mm -hmm. it, it's a very timely book. It's like everything has culminated at one time. And you're right. I don't think people do know. It, it's more than just getting through it. We're supposed to live We're supposed to overcome it. Yep, exactly. And that's what the book's about. Yeah. So we got to get him back. you got to go through the wilderness <laughs> to get to the promised land. Exactly. I am here. Well, hallelujah. <laughs> okay, let's do this. <laughs> so we're talking about end times, or you talk about end times in the book that, and you know, we've been praying Maranatha since the Jesus movement and others before us. And now as we see things kind of coming together in this day and age, looking at the end times, we find ourselves not really prepared. How do we prepare ourselves to live in the end times? Well, it's a, it's a great question because Jesus said that perilous times, fierce times, trying times, overwhelming times would come. And then he immediately follows up with five quick instructions. He says that I want you in Matthew 24, when, when he gave all the famous prophecies of the end time, it is not a message of doom and gloom for the believer. The first thing he says when they said, tell us what the signs are, tell us when you're going to come again, Jesus shifted the question back and said, Take heed to yourself. Look, one, one translation said, guard yourself, look within. And, and, and what, I, what I did was I took that as meaning we are to not just be caught up in what's going on now here, the signs of the times, the mark of the beast, the antichrist, this, that, and the other. All of that's going to happen. But he said, look within. 
do inventory, check within yourself, watch your words, watch your attitude, watch your temptations and your character and your household. And then he said, look to him. Because in the next part of Matthew chapter 24, it says, when you see all of these things happening, listen to this great verse of hope. He said, see that you're not troubled. Well, how do you do that when you're in stormy times and overwhelming times? You have to put your eyes on Jesus, just like they did in the storm when the disciples got in the storm. The moment they got their eyes off Jesus, we look within, we make sure, how's my passion? How's my character? How's my prayer life? How's my relationship with Jesus? Because that's where the peace comes, no matter what's going on outside. Once you look within, you look to him. And keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep looking at that fixed point of reference. uh, There's a family called the Wallenden family, and they are famous for walking on tight ropes. And the man said the way that he does it, no matter what comes at it, is he keeps his eyes focused on something on the other end of the tight rope. No matter what the wind does or what kind of distractions come, keep your looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. You say that we should be nighttime heroes. What do you mean by that? Well, in the Bible, when uh, Jesus, uh, his body was crucified, he died, and they put him in Joseph of Arimathea's tent. And the Bible said that Joseph of Arimathea went to Pilate at night, and he said, I want the body of Christ. I'm begging for the body of Christ. I want it. It was the body was dead. The body couldn't do much for him. There were no miracles like when Jesus was walking around. He was crucified. But here's a night, a man in the middle of the night, in the night season. You know, so many people, I heard your conversation about the church and church attendance. A lot of people go to church for what the church can do for them. But the body of Christ today is the church, and we need some nighttime heroes who step step up now, and they say, I'm going to be a hero for the body of Christ. I'm going to take the body of Christ, anoint the body of Christ, provide a place for the body of Christ, support the body of Christ. And I believe that God is raising up heroes in the night season of what we've been through to restore the body of Christ. And if ever there was a time for you to be a hero and say, I love the body of Christ. I believe in church. I support church. It's in this hour because not only will God bless you when you do that, but he'll bless others and others will be one and saved. Well, Jensen, it seems like there are so many people today that um, are struggling with anxiety, with feeling like they just can't seem to get on top of everything, to be able to do some of the things that the Bible says, like take every thought captive, um, like focusing on the things that they'd like to. Why do you think that is, and how do we deal with that? I think it's because uh, so many families are going through dark, dark seasons. And when you feel that overwhelming feeling, I mean, there's no hurt like when a family is broken. There's no hurt like the hurt of dropping off a child into rehab and wondering, you know, how long is this nightmare going to last? And when those things hit a family, they've got to have the rock solid faith of Jesus Christ. And, you know, what Jesus said in Luke, 21 is so powerful about the end times. His last message to the church was not one of end time hysteria or doom and gloom. He said, when you begin to see these things happen, I want you to get a look up spirit on you. He said, look up, lift up your head, your redemption draws nigh. In other words, what he told Zacchaeus, when he climbed in the tree, he said, I'm coming home to you. I'm drawing near to your family. And what I want you to understand is when Jesus said, look up, he's saying, I want you to have a look up spirit. 
I don't want you gloomy and I want you focused on me. I want you focused on my word. I want you to be focused on my promises. And when we do that, something happens. When we take like the disciples had oars and they were rowing, the Bible said Jesus saw them as they were rowing in the storm. They didn't quit. They didn't give up. I believe those oars represent worship and faith. Hold on to your faith. Hold on to your worship. And, and the Bible said when he saw them rowing, in other words, they were trying. They were doing what they could do. That's when Jesus did what only he could do. He stepped out on the water and he walked them over to the other side. You're where you are right now by divine instruction. Jesus told them to go. And where you are, he knows where you are. And what's over your head is under his feet. He is the miracle working God, and he cares and fights for your family. Boy, the book is so encouraging, filled with wonderful scripture and practical ways for you and I to feel that we are victorious in the midst of all that we're living through in our world right now. Jensen Franklin, thank you so much. We want to tell our viewers, overcoming when you feel overwhelmed. We want you to get the book. It's really a wonderful encouragement. Thank you for being with us today.